What is up my EOS peoples? Today, I'll be sharing with you all a recent conversation I had with Crystal Rose. We discuss her migrating her current project Sense from Ethereum to the mainnet, Referendum, what has her most excited about EOS, and why 2019 will be the year of the dApps. Please support everything EOS by voting for our channel sponsor, Cypherglass, and by smashing that like button and letting us know what you think in the comments below. Now let's just jump right into it. I'm the CEO here at Sense. My name is Crystal Rose, and um, I've been building tools on the blockchain for some time, starting with a Bitcoin app in 2014. But we actually, um, our company was building messaging and communication tools that created the largest chatbot network. So we have uh, embraced blockchain in a really big way now as we've embarked on privacy and looking at how uh, we can also create transactions and, and more fluid uh, sort of peer-to-peer -peer development. So that's why I jumped into EOS and have been a, a co-founder of a block producer as well, Shios. So if you are in the EOS community, hopefully you've heard of us as well. We're a group of women who, um, we put the she in EOS, <laughs> we're supporting, uh, putting the inflation on the network or the token rewards back into the community and supporting women in blockchain. So when when did EOS first get on your radar personally? Like what at what time frame were you attracted to it and decided this is exactly what I want to build on because it it does everything I I need to do that I'm not able to do on Ethereum. Uh, so I first heard about EOS when Brendan Bloomer was pitching it to Brock before yeah, the ICO, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and I remember you know, hearing that this will be the largest ICO to ever happen. And they were very confident that that was the case because of the year long uh, design that they had created. At that point, I had understood more of the technology um, and started reading a little bit more about it with Dan Larimer. I was already a fan because of Dan, because I think that he's built some phenomenal tools and Steam it to me is still one of the best examples of getting closer to having real social tools. And that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about social tools. I'm excited about communication tools. Um, I really want to see the social blockchain take off in a meaningful way. So just knowing that Dan was on board with the project was the first peak of interest. And then um, I was really waiting. My whole team was waiting for the first test net. So we were really excited that uh, that was developed you know, alongside their team, um, David Moss was here in Santa Monica, and he was the one that really fire started and launched the first test net. So we we got to be very close to the project early on, and uh, and that was exciting. And then when the block producers came around, that was um, that became something really interesting. And and a big part of that was just you know the opportunity to help the entire network stay alive was huge. So that was the big the big area for me was uh, once we could contribute on the community side, as well as build on the business side, I was completely in. As a block producer, what are your thoughts on the referendum that recently passed? Is it exceeding your expectations, meeting your expectations? What, what, what's your opinion on that so far? So that that's another reason why I think EOS is so unique and um, governance is very, very tricky to continue to push forward with a community that is diligently paying attention and voting, even if it's a small percentage of the network, I think it, it will gain momentum and it will gain traction. We need more voters, but I think that's in general across the network. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about it because I was looking at some of the projects that have been, uh, have been pitched. And um, to me, this is our opportunity and why I'm still really excited about the mainnet. This is our opportunity to get the things developed that we need. So, um, I, you know, I, like the one-to-one -one vote is really controversial and that's something that I'm kind of straddling as well. I think everybody's kind of has their perspective, but it, it's a hard, that one's a hard thing to determine what the outcome would it's be. It's hard to model. It's not been, you, you have nothing to model the data on. You can't look at today's voter behavior and make any uh, conclusions from that. It's impossible. It's really hard. And that's the other thing is it's all an experiment. We're still in the experimental phase. Um, you know, we, as Shios, as a block producer at the beginning of launching the network, we knew 
that there would be really, really large institutional exchanges coming out of left field. And, you know, we kind of had that expectation and that did happen. Um, now we're seeing how it turns out with, with all of the different voting mechanisms. Right now, for me, we're focusing on getting this app out. To me, the, the dApps are the most important thing because it gets all of the consumers on board. We get more wallets that way. We get more accounts. We we want more accounts on EOS and we want more people who understand their voice and their ability to vote. Um, so I'm excited about the ones that, that particularly affects us since the company, um, like identity. That's my favorite one right now is if we could figure out an identity layer on EOS and, and really have a you know, a, a seamless identity layer that could be used across dApps, it would be great for us to be able to get people's accounts, you know, embedded into into all the different dApps really easily and fluidly. So that's, that's one of my favorite ones, if I'm thinking about, like, what I've seen recently. Do you think we're gonna, going to see a good solution to identity this year? And along with that, because I think it does tie together, when's Steam 2.0? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think hopefully we're building it. Um, you know, that's uh, we'd love to be the ones that are doing the social blockchain and doing that in messaging. Um, identity, I think a lot of people are working on it. The proposal is is pretty straightforward. And I think that we are a benefactor of it if someone builds it or we might build it. And that's what we did with the uh, the protocol for you know migration of tokens. This is another reason why the community is so amazing, is you, you put something out and then a lot of people come collectively to build it. So, you know, as an open source network, I don't know that there's a, a bigger or better one that I've that I've experienced. To me, um, this is the best blockchain to be working on. The community is unlike any other one in the Western world, at least. I don't know what it's like in, in Asia on WeChat and everything, but... I've never been a part of a, a blockchain community where there's literally I'm in at least 60 plus different EOS Telegram channels all broken down by their own categories and subtopics. That is just unheard of. Um, I don't, Ethereum has the largest developer base in the world, but I don't think that they have the, the same. It, it's a large community, but it, it's not comparable as far as what I could see from like the engagement and the social activity and especially on Telegram. Um, coming from the Ethereum community, what differences do you see b between the two, both EOS and Ethereum, as far as the developers and the community in general, not so much the technology? I think you nailed it about um, the technical people versus, you know, maybe larger community. There, there are a lot of developers on EOS they're much more broadly spread because C++ is a far more, I think, entrenched coding language uh, in the developer community than Solidity. But you have to bring in developers who might not have ever had any blockchain experience or any interest in cryptocurrency. So there's a really broad diversity of people. But you also have um, marketers and all these other different types of people who have the same interests. So we're all a big crypto family who have different skill sets and we're coming together in, in a more cohesive way where you can actually build businesses. Uh, one of the places that I saw this happening the most is the EOS hackathons, the ones that were hosted by Block One. I got to go to three of those out of the oh. five. And it was amazing. Hong Kong was great. San Francisco you know, was huge. London was actually my favorite. I think that uh, it was it was really well done, and just the amount of people coming from all over the world was astounding. I I, I was in San Francisco, and I couldn't yes. believe the energy. It was just like palpable how how the energy in the room and how excited everyone was. And I, I think that was the effect that Block One was going for. It it lit the community, which was already engaged. It lit everyone on fire. And I, I feel like I've been even more motivated to, to grow this ecosystem since returning from my first and only hackathon I've, I've done with EOS, and you've done three. That's awesome. Um, I can't mentor. Did you go as a hacker? Yeah, I, I was on a team. Uh, we had we didn't make it to the finals. We had it was fun though. We got to pitch um, like a gaming uh, asset economy type thing to Mike Novogratz, which was pretty cool because it, it kind of tied in. It wasn't. We, we went into the hackathon expecting gaming to be the challenge, so we kind of had a few ideas of what we wanted to do when we, we went into it. And I, I think we did a 
much better job than I anticipated. I kind of just wanted to go just to kind of socialize and be around the community. But then at, the more we iterated over idea, our idea, the more I wanted to build it, the more I wanted to get it done. And it, was, it was mostly a product of the environment of being there and having such great mentors around. It was an incredible experience. Um, I did miss the the Shios events, though. I, I think you guys did them either the Friday night or the Thursday night before the hackathon. And I don't think I got in in time. But you, you talked about um, uh, how you need, we need to draw developers not only in from uh, Ethereum and from Solidity, but just developers in general, someone who never even touched a blockchain before but are somewhat interested in it. I think that's the value of these hackathons. And Shios helped additionally by doing uh, an onboarding workshop a day or two before the hackathon to help with those people. Um, you want to talk about what you guys did there at all? Yeah, that was really exciting. The um, the Shios team was helping to uh, kickstart people into the hackathon and um, providing mentoring services. And, and basically our, our core team uh, was there, including Ben Sigman, who is part of Sense as well. He's uh, he's our head of technology here. So we have a really amazing crossover. Um, our team from Sense, two of our developers were also there, and uh, they've been it, mentors. I, it, I will say it was really difficult to not actually contribute and do a project. We all wanted to participate. Once you're in the energy, you really want to participate. Um, it was really exciting, though, because the Shios event, actually, uh, uh, some of the participants ended up winning different prizes, including Nougat, who was the first prize winner in, in San Francisco. So it was really cool to see that some people had been there uh, pri you know, previously learning. And, um, and, and that's one of the beautiful things about the community is I, I feel like there's, um, like, we call it coopetition. It's cooperation and, and competition really well linked. So they're not independent of each other. You don't have to collaborate uh, only with your team and then compete against everyone else. You can actually collaborate with all of the teams while competing and still have winners coming out on the top without without this like highly competitive sort of negative atmosphere. And that's another huge difference. That was one of my favorite parts of being there was being in a concentrated group of EOS people a lot of them at the hackathon actually knew who I was. So like they were explaining their projects to me and like asking my input on it. And it, that was my favorite part of being there was kind of put it, putting my hands on all of these different projects. And so I, th I thought that was cool just hearing everyone's uh, pitches and projects and what they're doing and what they're trying to solve. And it, it was a very collaborative event. What did you call it? Collaboration? What was that word you used? Coopetition, I like that term. And, and competition. Yeah, because I didn't care who won. I, I figured I wasn't going to win myself, so I, I would at least like to have known the people who won, and it turned out that I did. I actually have a really good relationship with Rob Benke and the new, some of the guys from the Nougat team, so I was very happy to see them win. Uh, very, very good people. They've been trying to grow the EOS ecosystem for a long time now in, in San Francisco. So it, it was great to see them uh, get first place there. I thought they were definitely one of the teams that deserved it. Um, I was really excited to see some of the smaller projects uh, coming up as well. So um, EBT was my favorite one, the social like impact. Food stamps one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, they have gotten, I think, funding now from the government of Puerto Rico, where the, where the team is based. They've gotten funding from... Uh, y Combinator or some, uh, uh, you know, entry into into a program. So I think that coming out of it, and they also got to go to Africa for the finals, um, you know, and, and this was a team that previously had a uh, little experience and, and, you know, kind of bootstrapped it together at the event. And it was just a really, really winning idea. And I think that's the other part of it is kind of like the, um, Oh, you're a cat person. I can yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it broke in. Cute. Um, well, you know, I think part of the question about why, why, you know, keep pushing forward um, on mainnet or like why push forward with issues in the ecosystem or with governance issues and, and when people are starting to bail, because it's, it's going to repair itself. This is a self-healing system. We have far too many intelligent people engrossed in the success of the system to let it fail. 
And so I think that's that's a big reason why I, you know I want to keep being involved with the governance side of things as well as building, because we're experiencing the problems firsthand, and uh, and then helping to potentially contribute to to fixing them. How how have the first seven months of the mainnet been for you? Is it better than you expected? More difficult than you expected? Because I, I think everyone leading up to that mainnet launch had these very high expectations. And I personally think it's been a, the road has been much more difficult than anyone could have anticipated. How, how do you feel about the, the last seven months? It's, it's volatile, but it's not as volatile as Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, it, the technology wise, and that's the other great part about the, you know, these platforms is we can extract the technology from the cryptocurrencies, So we don't have to talk too much about the, the financial side of it, but, um, Technology wise, I mean, it has been it has been a struggle at the very beginning, you know, to be fully transparent. It's it was challenging at the beginning of the launch of the mainnet. And even now um, we've course corrected on things like problems with RAM and account creation being too expensive. But it is still in a shaky place. It's not it's not ideal or where it could potentially go. So I think there there are a lot of issues still, um, but it takes people building on it to work them out. So um, I still have a lot of hope. And, um, and I think, you know, in terms of like Dan Larimer's projects, I know he has a lot of stuff going on as well. Um, but he has a, a really big um, need for the success of the network like we all do. And I think he's, he's also really dedicated to seeing it, to seeing it flourish. So now that we started a new year, 2019, what are some of your predictions that we'll see before this time in 2020? As, mm. as far as e EOS specifically, not, not, I guess, wider than that. Let's just stick with the EOS mainnet. I, I always, um, I shy away from predictions because, uh, well, you know what, actually, I would now that things like, uh, we have like prediction networks and, and blockchains for this, I would potentially... Uh, start to wager on some predictions. I think um, we will see apps on EOS surpass uh, all other usage on other, all other networks. So I think as the dApps are released in these next few months and you know throughout the end of 2019, I think that we'll see uh, a spike in usage. And so I, I would say we could potentially double the accounts on the network and that might even be conservative. So, you know, maybe triple. Um, I would definitely say, though, it's, it's going to be all as a result of DAP usage. So, <clears throat> you know, it's not going to be a result of speculation. It's not mm -hmm. going to be a result of the price. One of my favorite parts about some of these projects uh, that either announced building on EOS or they've actually launched are, I'm, I'm really impressed by the ones like Mythical Games, uh, at a Galaxy Digital, because whenever you read mainstream press talking about these applications, they're called applications, they're not called dApps, blockchains barely mentioned, and you, you don't see the word crypto or cryptocurrency. Now, I think that is hopefully something we see more of in 2019. So uh, out of some of the larger uh, applications like the High Fidelities and the um, Mythical Games and the Everpedias. What what project other than your own, of course, has you the most excited that that's uh, you think's going to be building something big in 2019? Uh, that I can talk about. Oh. We can. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I actually I, I do like Everpedia a lot, even though they're they're always pointed to because I think they were a very early uh, DAP or you know, whether or not they'll be called an app. Uh, mm -hmm. I, what I like is that I know that they have other things in the background right now that they're working on and they're projects that I would have built if I were not building messaging. They're, they're human centric projects and they're knowledge based projects. I, and I saw some similarities there. Whenever I was reading about uh, more of what you were doing before sense chat and I was reading about the knowledge transfer things, I, I kind of got got the hint. It felt similar to some of the things Everpedia is talking about doing. So it's interesting you made that comparison as well. Yeah, we have a really close link in our desire to empower people to find value in in their knowledge. And you know, even a conversation like this, you're providing value to the people who are you know able to to watch it or download. 
and that value is something I'm excited to share, you're excited to share, and then the people watching, we're all part of this collective of people um, you know, wanting to share this knowledge with each other. To me, that's huge. And I think human, human knowledge is still one of the most fascinating things that we have um, that technology is going to help us elevate. We just haven't really gotten there yet because we keep getting stuck with, you know, social tools and, um, you know, posting photos and memes and gifts and things like that. So I think that that's why I keep gravitating towards these is, uh, is communication is my number one. My number one thought is if we could streamline transparent communication, we would be much more effective as an entire species. And then, you know, the second is like, then that goes into knowledge. So, well, what are we streamlining? Stream, streamlining, it's the it's the information. So it, seamless human information transfer and transparent communication are the two big areas I want to see improved. And right now, Sense is the only one that I know of working on messaging on the blockchain on EOS. I know there are some other projects on other chains, um, but I'm super fascinated whoever is working on a, a messaging type product or something that involves communication or chat, we might be able to work together. And I'd, I'd love to like put the call out for anyone who is working on those because we we have a, this idea of releasing an SDK in the future as well. So, you know, that's something that I'm paying attention to a lot of the projects, but definitely I'm uh, am honing in on the areas that, that I like the most. So who, who is your target demographic to use SenseChat? Once you start, uh, looking for user adoption, what, what are those users looking for that would lead them to uh, go out of their way to install the Sense app, get a wallet, and go through that entire uh, process that we know uh, still has a decent amount of friction uh, today? I think our ideal user is is everyone. The, the biggest goal for any DAP is, or even you know, blockchain protocol is mass adoption. One of the biggest things that we need to do this year and why I think 2019 is year, year of the dApps in a really big way is, is get over that bridge of people who truly understand the technical side of blockchain and, and being able to use a wallet or being able to manage their private keys um, without third parties. We, we have a, a job to do of getting the consumer on board who doesn't know how to do that. So um, right now we are building for our ecosystem. We love the EOS community. We're really excited mm -hmm. to have everyone who understands crypto deeply being on board. And, um, you know, that's the first step. And that's the step of, I think, the early adopters. Like, the, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are going to lead the way and show everyone the value of the product. But we're working really hard on the user experience. And I think that's something that, you know, the UI of all of these apps has to start to really understand what, the, the broader consumer market is looking for. So for us, the uh, the identity layer is really interesting. The profile, the account, how far do you go when you want to be private versus anonymous or pseudo anonymous? And, and those are all questions we're asking ourselves. Um, you know, right now we're building for what we know and who we know. And, and I think later this year, we're going to be testing out features for the broader, larger market. That's, that's great. So what is the strategy of, of Sense uh, as far as managing resources? So we, we have the Rex coming up. So you'll be able to actually lease uh, transactions if, if you don't have a, enough tokens of your own staked. Uh, or So you could use that, or you could just have a lot of EOS of your own staked. That works as well if you, if you have the, the war chest to do so. Um, or you could rely on your users uh, mostly using their own resources, which runs into limitations uh, of its own because uh, there's a good number of people who still don't understand how to manage their own resources. So what is your strategy as far as resources go once you move to the main net? It's like, it's like life. Like everyone <laughs> has some struggle manage, managing resources. We have explored a couple of options, and uh, users managing their own resources is one, but with our assistance, so doing some kind of staking. Um, fortunately, right now, War Chest is our strategy, so mm -hmm. that's sort of where, where we're at. Um, but, you know, we've also been looking at the other projects that are coming on online, like Bancor's DAP project, and looking at what that would be to build on. Um, <laughs> You brought it up. I didn't. So I, I saw on um, 
what is it called? Crypto Trader, uh, the CNBC show. Brock mentioned something about Bancor DAP token. Are, are, what are you able to say about this? I never Sorry. said the word token. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know if it's a token, but <laughs> it, there's supposedly, rumoredly, it, he basically just straight up said it, <laughs> that there's some sort of uh, resource scaling strategy that Bancor hasn't, an, Brock announced it, but Bancor will probably be announcing it soon now. So what could you tell us about that? Well, if he announced it, then I assume that it's uh, it's fair game, but we've definitely had some conversations I love Bancor. The team is fantastic. They've been at the very forefront of building tools that everyone can leverage and use since the beginning. Um, so for me, you know, I've I've just been watching along and seeing what it is that Sense can do to partner with the tools. Um, I'm unsure how much else has been said by Bancor themselves, but I'm fairly certain that a launch date has been. Uh, has been determined for for two two so February second. Um, that's one thing that I think maybe they'll be more, much more open about what's coming. But if anyone has uh, you know has has followed closely, I think it's um, it's really a a solution for the exact problems that we're talking about right now. I am I am interested to hear about it, and I do agree with you, everything you said about Bank, where they've been blazing trails with a, with a lot of the things they've been doing. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? So the, the Bancor X to, to go from Ethereum to EOS, how does that differ from the EOS 21 protocol that your team at Shios developed? Uh, with the EOS 21, there's no relay in between. So Bancor relies on having the uh, BNT token as a relay. And for whatever your token is, you'd have to create. So right now we have Sense on Bancor Ethereum, which is Sense BNT as the relay. We would have to move Sense uh, through Sense BNT into Sense, call it EOS or mm -hmm. Sense EOS BNT, uh, the new version. So they do have a, a center point through which everything funnels. And the EOS uh, 21 protocol was created simply to create a contract that does what we call like a black hole um, burn mechanism. So you're just sending mm -hmm. all of your tokens through a black hole, you're diminishing supply on one side and creating supply on the other side. Uh, so it's direct. So for, for your purposes, you, you had um, your, your token on Ethereum for several years, and you're just now moving everything over to the EOS mainnet. So you're going to basic, you needed to build a token swap. How do we turn this Ethereum uh, ERC20 token into a native EOS token? So that's the problem that the EOS21 protocol solved. Um, but for your purpose, it only needs to go one way. Is is that uh, where EOS 21 is currently? It's just at the one-way um, transfer? Because I remember whenever it first came out back in October, I think it said um, further development could allow bo it to go both ways. But is yeah, it Yeah, it, it could. You could have two, two options for that. So you could do um, a change back if you wanted to. Uh, right now it's black hole, meaning it just zeroes out the balance and and we're happy to do that we'd rather have all of our network oh, yeah. on place um yeah you know we launched our token uh december 2017 just around there and we spent 2018 using the funds to build application software and we we worked really hard in the first two quarters of the year trying to achieve our goals on ethereum and did build some tools. Uh, we had crypto direct message, which sends crypto into Telegram, and that was leveraging bots like our early Sensei network. But we now have seen the limitations. I think everyone has, and there are so many chains that people are exploring. Um, but EOS really has been still, even with resource issues and limitations, I think EOS is still going to come out on top as the largest most scalable decentralized application network. That's why we built EOS 21, which is just a protocol for migration of your token. Um, and I'd love to see the other, call it 1,000 or so projects who are all looking for a more scalable blockchain uh, to, to be able to use that protocol. So maybe 100, maybe 10, but if we can help anyone get over to the mainnet, um, and then we can start to figure out how to solve those problems in a larger scale. So in, in 2019, do you predict um, any projects from Ethereum to utilize uh, the EOS21 protocol that 
your team at Shios has built. Uh, have you had any teams uh, contact your teams to ask advice on how to make this protocol work for them? We have. There There have been several fork requests. So there are people who are working to uh, craft it to their own needs. And we've had a few different teams approach us on how to use it and um, in their consideration of what blockchain to move to, uh, you know, if they're going to be moving from Ethereum onto EOS, that's likely going to be what they, they're going to use. So everyone's waiting for the first one to press go, which is Sense. And we'll uh, we'll get that going in early to mid February, so that's our target for that. And then we'll see who follows on. And and you know we've had so many new uh, companies and tokens created uh, in just the last year. I'm really excited to see who's building and and what's coming out of it. I think that's actually a good spot to wrap up. So we could expect Sense Chat. So it's in currently in beta. Uh, how, how could a, uh, someone listening uh, be a part of this beta if they don't want to wait for the, the mainnet release? Or, or is it still open? Um, if you can contact the team directly, we're gr jump into our, our Telegram channel until we migrate you over to Sense Chat. Um, look at, look for at, Elias, right? He'll hook you up. Yeah, that's Elo, who, that's yeah. who reached out to me. Um, what, what about Shio? So I, I'm, I'm in the Telegram group. Is that the best place to send people is to link them to the Telegram in the description? I think so. Both Shios and, uh, and Sense have a good community behind them on, on Telegram um, until we move everyone to Sense Chat into our public groups. Uh, that is the best place to, to reach us. Also, Twitter is a good spot to reach out. And uh, once you are in Sense Chat, if you're part of the beta, we're giving tokens for feedback. So the more you participate in our surveys and help us out, um, and if you just you know sort of want to help shape the product, our team is talking to everyone. So we'll we'll incentivize you to help us out, um, and you can uh, connect with me directly, connect with Eli directly if you want to do a video chat. So just reach out to us, um, and you can find me on Twitter too at Crystal Rose. So at Crystal Rose or at Sense Token Works. Awesome. Thank you so much.